Bob Grinier, volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. I am carrying out a special request from Alan Smith from Looking for Heat to have a look at the backside with the Narugu Microscope and S7 uh, for the unused and uh, used uh, discs. Uh, obviously the unused has never been used and you can see one here. Uh, and the used one will have been used in the Lion 2 reactor so that we can have a better understanding of what it looks like on the back. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, and uh, we can see over on the bottom and the top in the field of view there that there are some nice yellow diamonds peeking out from the other side of the disc. I'm a little bit more comfortable doing this because the diamonds are pointing away this time. And there is some of the polymer fiber, which is about 80 microns, and I will share some images uh, of that for you to know that that is the diameter of those fibers. And they kind of make up the uh, substrate along with the binder to hold these nickel discs that have the diamonds in them in place. So I'm going to uh, zoom into this and uh, there's just some dust on there. Now what you're seeing uh, is it appears to have this kind of round area around the outside which helps I guess to bond it. Uh, and then there are areas here. Uh, you can see these little black areas, and that is where the diamond is uh, tip. It, one of the diamonds is poking through, and you can see that, that you know that there's semi regular there, uh, and that's to do with I guess the kind of distribution that they use to create it. And actually, maybe that is a uh, some sort of registration mark for the manufacturing process that so sits on a, a system. Yeah, that I think that's what that is. So you've got a bunch of holes here. There's a diamond tip, I think, point poking through. Uh, maybe that little bit there, you see. Uh, yeah, I think they're registration marks, these regular marks, uh, black bits, uh, allows it, the manufacturing process to keep everything in line when it's doing whatever it's doing to create these wonderful little discs that we're using in these experiments. So. I suspect that this is a kind of bonding agent on the on the rim here, which is put on to assist. So there's no real bonding agent on the bulk of the disc area, just on the perimeter, and that would make sense. Keeps it down to a minimum. All good manufacturing practice. And you can see the sort of brushed look on this underside. So maybe the underside of these discs go through some sort of flattening process after they're produced, or maybe it's just a reflection of the substrate onto which uh, they were grown, the uh, nickel was grown in which to place the diamonds. I don't know, we need a better understanding of how these things are made, I think that would help us. See some diamonds there, and there, and some of the fibres up close there. I'm going to go in as far as I can take this. It can get a little bit non-optimal on the focus. I'm going to play with the table here. So you can see it's it's fairly regular, at least at the capability of the Narugu. Narugo. Just a couple of diamonds tips sort of poking through here and there. Oh yes, there's the registration marks. It looks like there's a, another diamond tip poking through here. Okay, so that is the unused disc. And hopefully, if it hasn't moved over here, there will be the used disc. So, look, we have just straight lines on this and the bonding agent around the outside. And on this one, we start to see a little bit of more structure. There seems to be sort of some square things going on and some holes. So let's have a cl closer look into this. So, so the perimeter looks a little bit eaten away. And there are some definite holes in this uh, material. 
really. Some, some material has been lost, which is interesting given the melting point of uh, nickel. Let's get right into that. Yeah, there's lots going on there, isn't there? Got a sphere on the edge there, I think we do. Very interesting. Look, it's like a little pearl. <laughs> what is that then? Because that looks like it's clear. Let's throw a little bit of light on that. A little bit more light, yes. Yeah, that looks like it's see through and it's a sphere. There's another little one down there. Little. A little bit down there. Well, let's go here. There. Wow. Wonder what they are. Let's have a look, see what else we find. Turn that brightness down, it's a little bit overpowering. Okay. So maybe I'm going to try and adjust the, the height on the thing so it's easier to just keep it in focus. Um, somewhere there. That looks pretty good. Yeah, like I, I actually need like a kind of microscope base. I've said it before. Okay, so let's have a little bit more look in here. It's definitely more interesting than the unused discs. Certainly some eating of material away here. Uh, oh, we have a black sphere in there. In the center of a cavity. Of course we do. Which is quite nice. I can actually focus on those structures. And on the plane, so you, so you can see it's quite deep in there, shifting that focal plane from the underside of the discs here all the way through to whatever's on the under, other side. Yeah. Oh, sorry for the wobbly vision. There we have a lovely little black sphere there. In its own little, oh, is that a triangle cavity there? I don't know. Is the black sphere got black spheres on it? Hmm. Far more interesting than the run-of-the-mill starting material. Look at this here. Lots going on here. Look at that. Lovely. What is making these spheres? Hmm. Let's throw a change of light on there. They're all over the place. Look at that.
similar sort of like petal shapes going on here as we've seen in other parts of the reactor and, and in other technologies wow this this central area is <laughs> wow look at that Oh, this lion reactor just keeps on surprising. Look at that. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> wow. Wow. I mean, <laughs> there isn't a lot of choices to what this could be, you know, if you're just thinking chemically. Because, you know, it's... And, and all of them are high temperature. <laughs> I mean, well, certainly higher than supposedly the reactor was powered to. Um, you know, you've got nickel was 1390 or 14, whatever. You've got carbon, which is stupid high temperature. It isn't much higher than that. In fact, there isn't. Um, and... Obviously, I don't think it's, uh, you wouldn't expect it to be balls of deuterium, would you? Um, then there's alumina, that's 2000 and I think it was 70 or something for the alumina specified in and supplied by looking for heat. So, what are all these spheres? <laughs> So this isn't just something that's a feature on the outside of the reactor. This is literally everywhere, everywhere. Look at that. In cavities. Over here we have a nice, I think, where, where we have, I've lost it. There you go. There, in the center you have larger sphere with little spheres running around it. Wow. absolutely fascinating so look there's there's this big sort of cross going on here is that a huge sphere in the middle of that cross is it let's have a look well it certainly looks glassy i think we can conclude that what well, you're seeing that little bright ring there that is the ring light on the narugu but there certainly seems to be something at the center of this overall structure with these branches coming out. And then uh, over to the right, I think, depends how I rotate this, <laughs> might be the left, you can see, in fact, I'll move it in that direction, then you know what I'm talking about. So I'm moving that into the center there. There seems to be a ball with spheres around it. And then over here, there's balls with spheres around them. And then further over here, we've got balls with spheres around them. Hmm. And this almost looks like it's a, wow, this almost looks like it's a glassy flow. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. That is the Lion 2 used disc.